this is Talon Jane. This is FTE 214, week three assignment. Uh, today is the 6th of August, and uh, we will be going over three uh, components, three random components of the 1911. We're going to talk about their critical dimensions, their potential malfunctions, um, likely damage, and then other components that they interact with. But we're going to go ahead and get started. Thanks. The three components that I've chosen are the extractor, the feed ramp, and the firing pin. Before we get started, let's go ahead and clear our firearm, so point it in a safe direction. We're going to drop the magazine, inspecting for ammunition, lock the slide to the rear, inspect the chamber, inspect the feed area. Uh, this firearm is now safe. So starting with the extractor, the critical dimensions of the extractor is the uh, tension of the extractor. So in other words, how, um, how much force it has in, as well as the condition of the claw. Those are the two important things. So if we're looking at this um, right here, we're looking at the condition of this claw right here and how well it would be able to grab a snap cap here. Okay, so I have a snap cap. So this claw interacts right here and this claw is actually what pulls the ammunition out of the chamber. So if, if you look at this and you're able to see that there's not, that this basically doesn't grab a hold of ammunition if it's if it the ramp is basically if the claw has like uh, no hook to it and it just slips over that could be uh, you know cause like a, a failure to extract type of air so that's what you're looking for now this could be damaged um, you know it can naturally become damaged just through use um, but sometimes you'll see people uh, take a you know, around or whatever, and put it in the chamber directly instead of letting it come up the feed ramp uh, from the magazine. Um, what happens then is that when people slam the slide shut, this piece has to force over the top of the ammunition and that can cause damage. Um, you can adjust the tension uh, by bending the body of this. Okay, so like if you, uh, if it, doesn't have enough force into this you can you can bend it so that it basically grabs a hold of the ammunition a little bit tighter um, if there were alterations done to this maybe somebody filed it too much or maybe they bent it too much or something like that it could cause you know issues basically getting that hook you know over the top of, of the ammunition extracting you know this interacts directly with the cartridge, so that would be the component interaction or whatever is the card. So that completes the extractor. Uh, the critical dimensions of the feed ramp is the angle at which the feed ramp it, uh, interacts with the barrel. Uh, so basically like this, the angle that this, let's see if I can show that, the angle where this feed ramp meets in with the barrel. Um, you also, um, another thing would be like a, if there was too big of a gap, like if there was a gap like that and basically the ammunition had to jump between the feed ramp and the barrel, the, the very end of the barrel has an angle to it as well. And those two things should basically line up so that when the ammunition is sliding up the front of this, it slides right into the barrel. Gunsmiths will polish this. It should be it should be smooth and polished. It should not be, you shouldn't grind this down whenever you're doing that. Uh, so if it's done correctly, there's no material move, uh, removed or whatever. Modern firearms, the angle of the feed ramp should not need to be altered. If it's an old 1911, you know, that was hand ground, you might have to change that angle just a little bit to line up with this perfectly if you're having a failure to feed a malfunction. But in general, in modern firearms, that's all gonna be machined to the right angle. The only thing you might need to do is, is polish it. Damage can come from normal wear and tear. However, usually bullets are made out of copper or lead, and this is steel, so you're not going to, you're not gonna see a lot of damage right there. 
basically it should just be doing now. Uh, if you are using steel jacketed ammunition, you might see some premature wear on there. Again, the only interaction this really has besides with the barrel uh, right there would be with the cartridges themselves. The critical dimensions for this is that the pin protrudes from the rear of the slide is uh, crucial because this is where, so when this is together, the firing pin comes through here and interacts with the, the primer. And then in the back, it protrudes through this plate right here when I was in. And that back part is actually what the hammer hits when this comes down, it hits the back part of this firing pin directly, and that's what interacts right here. So your, your critical dimensions are how much this protrudes out into the chamber area where it's going to interact with the primer, as well as how much this protrudes out where the hammer is going to hit it. You're not really gonna see a lot of altering of this. You may see it swapped out with a different firing pin, like a titanium firing pin or, you know, some other, something else, but there, there shouldn't be a lot of alterations to the actual firing pin itself. There might be some wear and tear damage just because as this strikes the primer with substantial force over time, the nose of the firing pin uh, may start to um, mushroom down or you know shorten um, due to the force that's exerted and at that point you probably just need to replace the firing pin. This interacts with the hammer, it interacts with the firing pin spring, um, and it interacts with the cartridge. That is the three components and their critical dimensions and what they interact with. So.